the Venturi effect. That's what we've just been looking at really quick there. Uh, that's going to be the subject of today's video. So what I'm going to do is hopefully break down and simplify what the Venturi effect is so we can see the effect that it actually has. There's basically only one principle that if we can understand that, it makes the rest fall in place. So I'll use the traditional example of the Venturi effect to get a, a basic understanding of it. Then we can look at the experiment that I've just quickly demonstrated for you right there so we can see how the Venturi effect is in play, which then means by the time we move on to an actual scuba regulator, it's all gonna make sense. And then hopefully by the end of this, we'll have a basic understanding of how the Venturi effect works. So. Let's get started. Okay, so the Venturi effect. Like I said earlier, we just need to understand one basic property and if we can get that and get your heads around that, then it should make all of the subsequent information that we're gonna look at a lot easier to understand. So what is that principle? Well, pressure and velocity are inversely proportional to one another. What does that mean? It means as you increase one, you decrease the other. There is a relationship that exists between pressure and velocity. So I depict that just with a square here and draw a line through it. Okay, what I'm saying there is as you increase one, you decrease the other, okay? So as long as you can get your head around that concept, it should make the subsequent information that we're gonna look at a lot easier to understand. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to an actual example of what the Venturi effect is. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the, the classic depiction of the Venturi effect. The Venturi effect is basically manipulating the flow of a fluid. A fluid can be liquid or gas. So in this instance, we can just assume that this is gas um, as it has you know, a bigger relationship to scuba. Um, and what we do is we manipulate the flow of that gas by causing a constriction, which you can see we've put a squeeze at this point right here. So if we always refer to the pressure and velocity relationship, how they're inversely proportional. If we have the flow of gas, so this is moving gas, if we constrict it at this point here, what happens is this gas speeds up to get through that point right there because you've got to get all of this gas which is moving through a smaller point, so it speeds up to ensure that it all gets through there. In everyday use that you may have seen, an example of this is with a hose pipe. If you turn a hose pipe on, you have the flow of water coming out the end. If you stick your thumb over the end of that hose pipe, you may have noticed that it increases the velocity. The water comes out a lot faster. This is a, an example of the same thing. So what happens here is we have the flow of gas and it is a higher pressure than the faster moving gas here because remember, as we increase velocity, we decrease the pressure. It's this little relationship that we just talked about earlier. They are inversely proportional. You increase one, you decrease the other. So by manipulating the flow of gas, what we've done is changed the velocity of it. This slower moving gas speeds up, therefore it drops in pressure. So the higher pressure here drops to a lower pressure as the speed increases. Now this is important because high pressure gas will always move towards low pressure gas to try and balance it out. It doesn't work the other way around. Low pressure does not move to high pressure. High pressure always moves towards low pressure. So by manipulating the, the flow, the velocity rate at this point, we have intentionally dropped the pressure, which in turn means the higher pressure here wants to be over here. So it's going to encourage this flow, which may, takes less effort. This is in effect the Venturi effect. So what we'll do now is we'll show you the example of the demonstration that we've just done before. Okay, so now to try to give it a bit more of a practical application. Um, if we think back to the experiment that I've done in the introduction, I was holding a piece of paper, 
okay the piece of paper was just flopping over then what I started to do was blow across the top of it now by blowing across the top of it what I've done is I've increased the velocity of the fluid in this case it's a gas it was air I started blowing across the top of it so across the top of that paper is faster moving gas what I've done is increased the velocity of the gas moving across the top so if we increase the velocity we decrease the pressure so I've created an area of lower pressure above the paper which means below the paper is higher pressure because the gas under here is moving slower than the gas here so I've manipulated the flow of gas increase the velocity decrease the pressure in this part so we have created a high pressure low pressure gradient here and if we think back to what we've just said where does high pressure always want to do it always wants to move in the direction of low pressure so in essence this area of high pressure starts moving up so it creates lift which is why it picks the paper up as you blow across the top of it this is surmised to be one of the reasons why aeroplane wings have lift this is what creates it because the aeroplane wing is manipulating the flow of gas around it when the gas hits the front of the wing it compresses and it moves across the top a lot faster than it moves on the underside which creates an area of high pressure and low pressure the high pressure wants to move up in essence causing lift which is the experiment that we've just seen it's the venturi effect in action okay so what we're looking at here is we're looking at cross sections so side views of a scuba regulator and the venturi set to off and on which is depicted as usually a minus and a plus sign on the side of the regulator on that lever that you can crank back and forwards so first of all if the venturi is set to the minus so the venturi is not in effect here this is generally the position we want it to be in when we're entering the water so we don't get any um, unnecessary or unwanted free flows so it's set to the minus what's happening is the gas flow inside the regulator it just comes out of the chamber and it fills the regulator up okay so you can see it's it's kind of multi-directional it's just filling that whole chamber up ready to be inhaled by the diver the diver then draws on the the gas that's in there so they're taking the the pressure out of this chamber the gas pressure out which in turn is what's going to flex that diaphragm in and continuously release gas into this chamber for exhalation so it's not aided by anything other than the diver's inhalation but if we then crank the venturi onto the plus and open it up what happens next is so we see now by having the venturi effect set to plus what it does is it manipulates the flow of gas inside of the regulator so instead of distributing it all inside the regulator it's aiming everything towards the diver's mouth and by using this kind of deflector shield that you can see inside the reg as well it's helping all of the gas go straight into the diver so by having all of the gas move in the same way it's a higher velocity so the pressure is lower here which means it is higher in this area here the high pressure wants to move to the low pressure so it's helping the diaphragm kind of flex in which in turn is aiding that ease of breathing which is the venturi effect 